William Gargan stars as Barry Craig, confidential investigator. The trouble with murder as an occupation, folks, is that it doesn't last very long. In no time at all, you come to a dead end. The National Broadcasting Company presents William Gargan in another transcribed drama of mystery and adventure with America's number one detective, Barry Craig, confidential investigator. Craig speaking. An investigator's license costs only a few bucks. When you're starting in the business, you've got ambition. So you have the license put under glass and framed. You spend a couple of hours deciding on the best place to hang it. Then you find out all you've done is bought yourself a front seat for the back stairs. But you also find out an awful lot of people use the back stairs. It's open. Craig? Yeah. You alone? There are mice. Uh, they're tame, though. I uh, wonder if you're the man I'm looking for, Craig. You'll have to figure that out by yourself. It says confidential investigator on your door. I had that put on myself. Maybe I was boasting. Small place. Hmm. What's this door? Leads to the back stairs. Yes? You want to look under the desk, too? I have to be careful. How much money do you make a month? Not enough to have my clothes made by your tailor. Mm-hmm. I think perhaps you'll do. Thanks. Hey. This is what you'll work with. An envelope? Take a look inside. All right. Money. Got it. Uh-huh. Five thousand. Yes. I want you to buy a necklace for me, Craig. For five thousand dollars? That's right. You got any preferences in necklaces? A girl named Wendy Harper has the one I want. She lives at the Beecham Towers Hotel. Maybe she's got more than one. I know. The necklace is pearl. You buy it from her, turn it over to me, and collect 500. You don't like the Beecham Towers Hotel? Well, what's that got to do you with it? You could go over there, buy the necklace yourself, and save my fee. I could also be sued for divorce. Meaning you can't afford to be seen with her. Fair enough. I'd like a receipt for the 5,000. Sure. Received from... From? You don't need that. How will I get in touch with you? I'll phone you. Okay. Your receipt. Thanks. I suggest you begin work at once. Right. Oh, one thing. Yes? Suppose she doesn't want to sell. She'll sell. You're sure the necklace is worth five grand? Yes, I should be. I gave it to her. I congratulated myself cautiously. A case a week like this, and I could start getting my clothes tailored, too. I locked the office door. Who knows? Word might get around I was a man people handed $5,000 to. It would give the entire building, all three moldering stories of it, class. Burglars might start dropping in. Oh, hello, Jake. Hey, Mr. Craig. Oh, yeah, I forgot. Uh, I'm going down. Don't rush it. The elevator's got to have time to rest. After the long pull? Yeah. Got to rest your horse at the end of a furrow, you know. Jake, forget about that farm in Vermont, will you? You're in the big city now. I'd rather have a horse. If you was in such a hurry, why didn't you walk down? Too proud. I've just moved into the upper income brackets. That's so? Thanks, by the way, Jake, uh, did you notice the man you took down from my floor a couple of minutes ago? No. Had your nose buried in the farmer's almanac? I didn't take nobody down. Oh. Well, that was my client. Who was? The man you didn't take down. I don't suppose you took him up either. No. Used the stairs both times. The back stairs. Hmm? Jake. Yeah? When was the last time those back stairs were swept? I don't know. I only been here six months. Yeah. Mr. Craig. What? Must get kind of lonely up there on the third floor. Sort of. Why? Oh, just wondering. You sure you had a client? (laughs) 
I smiled at Jake. I could feel a fat envelope in my pocket. $5,000 carries a lot of conviction. Good afternoon, sir. Miss Harper. Is she expecting you? Phone up to her, and she will be. Yes, sir. The name? Craig. Uh, one moment, sir. Miss Harper? Uh, there's a gentleman here to see you, uh, Mr. Craig. Yes, of course, Miss Harper. Uh, 407, Miss Harper's expecting you. Thanks. The Beecham Towers was a lot nicer looking than the building on 23rd. But then I didn't use the back stairs. Miss Harper, I figured, was leaving it all up to me. 407 was a suite. You walked past a small foyer before you hit the living room. It was a nice living room. The furniture was modern and bright. There was a wrong note, though. Miss Wendy Harper. She was on the couch. She looked modern and bright, too. The wrong note? She happened to be dead. Her eyes were open. For a minute, I had the impression they were looking at me. I couldn't decide if they liked what they saw or if they were looking over my shoulder the way I should have looked. Clancy, the house detective. Good for you. Now, you're in my way. You're not coming in. Now, listen. The old lady in the next suite heard a woman screaming from here. When? A few minutes ago. She needs new batteries for a hearing aid. What time is it? 7.30. Nobody screamed in here for at least a couple of hours. Now, where's Miss Harper? She's in. I want to talk to her. You're going to be disappointed. Miss Harper's in no mood for conversation. I'd like her to tell me Lots that. Lots of things we'd like just never happen. Hey, hey what's the idea? If you want to get in here, take my advice, uh, call a no, cop. Hey, I slammed the door shut in Clancy's face. Clancy was guessing. He wasn't sure. Maybe I was just a boyfriend with a temper. He'd stand around and wonder what to do for a while before trying to come into the room again. That gave me time enough to go through the suite, make sure it was empty, make sure Miss Harper was still dead. She was. They don't come alive very often. And then check on a pearl necklace. There wasn't one around. I hadn't figured there would be. By that time, I was in a hurry. This time, I was the one for the back stairs. I was picking up time with every step I took. But time for what? The back door led to an alley. I had ash cans for company. A man named Nothing, whom no one had seen for a client. And a crude frame-up for murder as a future. I had no optimism about my chances for playing tag with the homicide squad. The cops had a name for me. I had no name for the man who'd sent me to visit a dead girl. No name, no lead, nothing but a hope. That whoever had set up the deal would be too impatient to wait for the morning papers. Up the street, the Marines were coming. I said goodbye to the alley before they could land. Made the other side of the street. And waited. The hotel was on a quiet street. No crowds. Nobody watched the cops pour into the hotel. Nobody but me and a small man pretending he was part of a doorway down the street. The last cop went into the hotel and the small man abandoned the doorway. He didn't know it, but he had me for company. It was easy. The small man wasn't worrying. According to the general idea, I was being interviewed by a dozen cops at the moment. He led me across town with no trouble. The address was 5413 East 79th Street. The house was old. The ivy on its walls was probably hand-picked. The small man used the servant's entrance. I decided to be formal. A brass plate under the doorbell read John Peter Kendall. I thought he'd be surprised to see me on his doorstep. I was surprised. Yes? Uh, 
Mrs. Kendall? I'm Mrs. Kendall. Good. Uh, I beg your... Your excuse. Better shut the door. Are you a salesman? <laughs> Not exactly. Well, you're big enough, heaven knows, but you don't look very dangerous. So? Thank you. Uh, Mr. Kendall home? I don't think so. I, I don't know. I guess it is a pretty large house. <laughs> it is. Also, John and I don't get on very well together. But why am I telling you this? Maybe because I look reliable and a little stupid. That's silly. It's not very hospitable keeping you out here in the hall. It's not. Uh... But uh, I intend to continue doing it unless you can give me a reason. For your being here, I mean. I do insurance work. Oh? Your husband hired me to trace some property of his. Well, he must have been very anxious about it if he asked you to come here at this hour. He was anxious. Strange. Why? Dear John has so much property. Oh, this was something special. And, uh, confidential? It used to be. What does that mean? Lost any pearl necklaces recently, Mrs. Kendall? Why, yes, I did. That's what he wanted me to trace. Oh. Please come with me, Mr. Uh... Jones. Jones. Wait here a moment. All right. Mr. Jones. Yes? This is the necklace I lost. It looked like five grand, too. Mrs. Kendall, her price tag wasn't showing. Well, Mr. Jones. When did you get it back? John brought it to me, perhaps an hour ago. An hour ago? Then he is home. He said he might go out for a stroll. I didn't try to translate. A stroll in John's peculiar vocabulary could mean almost anything. You asked him where he got the necklace? No. I assumed he'd hired someone like you to find it for him. Mr. Jones. Yes? What are you really after? Will you see if your husband's home, please? All right. Mr. Jones. What? Are you sure you're doing something for my husband? Not to him? <laughs> She didn't wait for an answer. It was very still in the Kendall home. I wondered how well Kendall had covered his relationship to Wendy Harper. Pretty well, I thought. There were no cops around. Mrs. Kendall was taking a long time. Too long a time. Mrs. Kendall! Mrs. Kendall! I'm here. Where's the light? No, no, we might shoot again. Never mind. It's gone. The light switch, the, the wall to your left. Okay. Oh, right. So right. Shh. What? I, I, I was talking to Max. He's our handyman. I, I'd asked him about John. That's Max over there? Yes. Max started to tell me something about... Oh, it's crazy. About a hotel. When John opened the door, he'd been listening. He had a gun. It was dreadful. Dreadful. Here, sit down. I'll have to take a look at Max. All right. I, I don't know. He'd been there or seen something. He was staring at me as though he were terrified. And, and then the door opened behind him. I could see John's face. And after that, the shots came. You'll have to phone the police. I? Yeah, I can't stay. I've got a date. Mrs. Kendall, where would your husband go if he didn't want to be found? John? I, I don't know. I don't you know. You must know. A man as wealthy as he is. Well, he's got a place on the Sound. It's only a shack. Sort of a boathouse. What's the address? Riverview Road, right off the parkway. I'll find it. You'll be all right. The police Mr. will... Mr. Jones, why was Max shot? Why? <laughs> My benefit, mostly. Your benefit? Yeah, his death moves me right out of the chair. I don't understand. You don't have to, for right now. I've got an errand to run, to convey thanks and make a payment. <laughs> Hey, Bud. Yeah? Kind of late to be driving out to the Sound, ain't it? You mind? Nah, I don't mind. As long as you've got the fare. I've got the fare. Only reason I brung it up is, uh, not many cars going out this way this time of night. Yeah, I guess so. So the, uh, car behind us must be tailing us. Car behind? Yeah. Been there last half an hour. It's got one headlight weaker than the other, kind of stuck in my mind. Don't worry about it. I don't want no trouble. There won't be any for you. Rick, 
Riverview Road, bud. That's a shack up ahead? Yeah. The other car. Didn't swing around a fence. Was with us up until then. Nice. How much do I owe you? A couple of bucks. Here you are. Thanks. How about me hanging around for a while? No, it might discourage my friend. The guy on your tail? Uh-huh. Good night. Good night. Good night. Craig, Barry Craig. Recognize the name, Mr. Kendall? Uh, what do you want? Hard talking through a door. Don't try anything, Craig. You don't need that gun. Let's not agree about that. It's cold out here. Come in. Slowly. Thanks. Over there at the table. Sit down. Okay. Put both hands on the table, please. Everybody knows all the angles nowadays, except maybe me. Why did you come out here? I had a report to make. Report? Sure, don't you remember? You hired me. Oh, well, I... Funny thing. Nine times out of ten, people who hire me don't expect me to believe them or to carry out their orders exactly the way they gave them. They're always working on an angle. Well, what's so funny about that? I always believe my clients. I do my best to carry out their orders the way they say they want them to be. That gets me into more trouble. You're wasting time. And you don't have much time left? You... You said you had a report to make. Sorry. That necklace you hired me to get. Well? It's back in your wife's possession. You... You gave it to her? No, you did. It's a little late for jokes. No jokes. You can check with your wife. Not only that, Mr. Kendall, the whole deal worked out a lot cheaper than you expected. What do you mean? $5,000 is a lot of money. One girl's life, a lot cheaper. You, you've still got the money? Yeah. Now, don't reach. Stop being so nervous. I was just getting this. $5,000. And Wendy? What do you think? Well, I don't understand what you mean. You've had time enough to get here, so I'd better get rid of this light. <laughs> Your gun, Kendall, I'll need it. Don't move around, Kendall. It's dark in here. Our mystery man outside hasn't got artillery on a revolver. We're safe for right now. Well, I don't know what's happening. Shut up. He's moving around, waiting. We can wait, too. Yes, but for what? He's got to make up his mind. If we're dead or not, you have to check. Till then, let's chat, huh? A man comes into my office, hands me five grand, instructs me to buy a pearl necklace from a girl in a hotel. Oh, I don't my story. The guy uses the back stairs, doesn't leave his name. I take the dough, get to the hotel, walk into the girl's suite, and get knocked out. The girl is dead. Yes, but you I didn't... keep interrupting. I wake up to find the old lady next door has heard a woman scream and yelled for the house pick. He's at the door. He's supposed to walk in, find the dead girl, and me with 5,000 bucks in cash on me. He calls homicide, and I tell my story to them. How do you think they go for it? I don't know. I... I, I, I don't... don't overdo it. It's plain enough. My client is a work of the imagination, they say. I knock the girl off her a dough. Very simple and very pretty. Well, then, then who is that outside? When I got to the hotel, I had to be announced. The clerk called upstairs. He held a conversation with Miss Harper. He told me she said it was okay to go on up. But Wendy Harper was already dead. Well, then... Then... Shh. Junior's making his bid. Okay, drop it. What? I said drop it, Junior. You got the moonlight behind you? No. I don't like it, but... Oh! Got a match, Kendall? Uh, yes, yes, I have. Let's have a light then, huh? Oh, all right. Over here. Yeah, the hotel clerk. He's registered his last guest. Death. John Peter Kendall didn't have any comments to make. He stared at the dead clerk as though he'd never seen a corpse before. Maybe he hadn't. He was my client, wasn't he? Let's get out of here. Yes, but what about him? He's dead. Well, isn't there something we should do? There's nothing you do about the dead. Well, I mean, he was killed. Yeah? 
Well, the police? You're in the clear on this particular death. What are you worrying about? I suppose you know better than I. Also, I've got the gun, so... All right. Yeah. The clerk's car is out here. How about yours? I came here by cab. That can be checked. I still say I came here by cab. Okay, we'll borrow the car. Hold it. That's on this road. The police. Sounds like them. Of course, they could be on their way to a ball. Would you like to stay and chat with them? No, no. No, there, there, there are too many things. I, I'm confused. Where's Riverview Road lead? To the city. I mean the other way. Well, it sort of, sort of peters out about a half mile from here. No good. We'd take one look at the cops and come after us. With the road a dead end only a half mile away, we'd be finished. Come on. Well, we... We could drive toward the city. You think they'd let us pass if they're heading here? Forget it. We'll leave the car where it is. Who planted these trees? I had them put there. Oh, good for you. You should have planted them a little more thickly, however. We get in among them. Ah, this ought to be good enough. But any search would... Find us? Sure. But maybe... Uh Uh-oh, here they come. A squad car and a taxi. Yeah, the cab I came out in. The driver spotted the clerk tailing me. He must have hung around down the road and heard the shots, then went back to town and collected police. Well, they've checked the car. Empty. Now for the house. In a half dozen seconds, they'll be popping out of there looking for us. Come on! Maybe we can make the cab. The driver left it out in the road proper. What good does that do? The the squad car... Don't worry about that. Get into the cab and start it. All right. Me, I'm going to be nasty to a tire. Yeah. Get going. Fine. Well, what did you do? Screw the tire valve open on the squad car. The clerk's car is blocked off. So they'll have to change the tire. Maybe we'll have enough time. The police won't like it. How very true. You know, Mr. Kendall, I'm in trouble. Not only am I wanted for murder, but now for committing a nuisance on police property. close enough to hear the cops discuss their flat tire. I think their language would have been frightful. Hey, take it easy, Mr. Kendall. We don't want a ticket, too. We're almost back in the city. Where do you want to go? Home and sleep, but not just yet. Well, then let's make it your home, huh? My home? The mansion you and your wife play hide and seek in, except both of you seem to be hiding rather than seeking. If you don't mind, I could do without your wit. So could I if I had any. Mr. Kendall. Yes? The whole thing started with a necklace, a pearl necklace. That's right. You didn't bother telling me it had belonged to your wife before you passed it on to Wendy Harper. It hadn't belonged to my wife. And why all the anxiety about getting it back? Well, she found out about it through the jeweler where I bought it. I had to pretend I'd gotten it for her as a surprise. That meant you had to get it back from Wendy. It would have looked bad in a divorce case. And Wendy wouldn't part except for five grand? That's right. Do we have to? We do. Come on. Better not ring. Your handyman wouldn't answer. Max? He's dead, too. What? Use your key. Why, I I can't take much more of it. There won't be much more. Go on. Who is... Hello, Mrs. Kendall. Uh, Mr. Craig... Mr. Jones. And John. You started to say Mr. Craig. What? The name is Craig. Where are the cops? The... Oh, about Max. Yeah. Well, I I haven't phoned them yet. I was ill after you left. Terribly ill. I still don't feel right. That hotel clerk doesn't feel right either. What hotel clerk? You sound like... like Max. The one who sent me up to Wendy Harper's room. The one who had a conversation with Wendy Harper after she was dead. This is all completely... completely... Isn't it? John, what's happening? Why are you staring at me like that? He doesn't love you anymore. Oh, you... No, no, no. Let's keep it genteel. Kendall? Yes? Call some cops, huh? Police? Yeah. They want to take Max to the morgue. Max, who led me to your wife and died for it. And even more, they'll want your wife. It had been a long evening. 
I'd stayed ahead of homicide for a while, but they always catch up. Craig. Well, Lieutenant Trav Rogers. Give me one good reason why your license shouldn't be revoked. This is Joanne Kendall. I said a good reason. What else could I have done, Trav? You're not trying to tell me you were afraid of the frame. I never tried to tell a lieutenant of homicide anything. No, I wasn't. But I had a job to do. I got it done, too. You could have been killed in the process. Oh, there's a law against that. Oh. Craig, we got the whole thing laid out. The Kendall woman moved in on what looked like a perfect opportunity to get rid of Wendy Harper, frame you for the killing, and have a club over her husband's head for the rest of his life. Because he'd hired you, all she had to do was threaten to tell us about that, and he'd be tied in. Well, where did you get the bright idea it was Mrs. Kendall who set you up and not her husband? Clancy, the house dick at the Beecham Towers. Huh? He came up and told me an old lady had heard a woman scream a couple of minutes before I regained consciousness. The Harper girl had been dead for hours then. So it had to be Mrs. Kendall screaming. You get Clancy up and you arrested. Mm-hmm. Come on. Buy me a beer. Well, we'll go out and have beers, but what makes you think it's going to be on me? You just made 500 bucks, remember? Holy smoke. What now? I forgot to collect. Good night, folks. See you next week. You have been listening to William Gargan in another exciting transcribed mystery drama from the adventures of Barry Craig, confidential investigator. Tonight's story, The Case of the Naughty Necklace, was written by Lou Vittes. Next week, it's the strange story of paper bullets about which Barry Craig has this to say. Next week, folks, I find out that words can be bullets when two prize-winning authors do their literary best to prove the gun is mightier than the pen. See you next week, folks. Featured in the role of Mrs. Kendall was Barbara Wheat. Barry Craig, starring William Gargan, was under the direction of Hyman Brown. This is Don Pardo speaking. Now enjoy Meredith Wilson's Music Room on NBC. NBC.